Oh. So today I'm going to tell you another very interesting story. This is also from um, the radio interview in July I had with Dean Carney, and this was his rebuttal. Um, we would talk briefly about the fires. So um, what the lady said was she kind of grilled him in a really good way because the fires were pretty devastating and all that. And um, he said this. <laughs> well, look, we, we did take a number of steps um, after the bushfires to, um, to, I guess, mitigate against any impacts on the environment. So so can I just stop it there, like all five seconds of it? So like when he says mitigate against any impacts on the environment so literally what happened after they fucking after the fires was they went forestry court which i should now be referring to them as those f and c's because last time i got recommended to swear less in my video so no more fuckery court these guys are now just known as those f and c's so anyway so that f and c's went to log a place in called the sticks river park Fuck park forest <laughs> what the fuck mate the park anyways not many trees in the park so anyways they went to fucking log this state river <laughs> come on <laughs> state river okay no 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 last time those f and c's went to log the sticks river state forest yeah that's the one so they went to log the state forest and basically this was the home to this poor little endangered mouse called the Hastings River Mouse. So cute. That just had like 82% of its habitat incinerated by the fires. So those FNCs had not only the audacity to do that and say that they were just like finalising work in this location, but they began to move logging trucks, I kid you not, into a great koala park up at Coffs Harbour. Look, in terms of koalas too, I will say that we have a strong focus on koala management in, in what we do. We have lots of koalas in our regrowth forest, and that is a good thing. It's something that we're very aware of. This is gold because this is like all like 10 to 15 seconds of a grab, and mate, just to defrag this shit is like a gold mine. We very quickly uh, started working with our the regulators and other government agencies about things we can and should do around timber harvesting on a side-by-side -side basis. We, we increased our... So yeah, when, <laughs> when he says they quickly began working with other government regulators, it was... In November that same year, so 2020, that there was literally now a public beef on between those other government agencies and regulators um, because the EPA trying to basically assert some kind of application of post-bushfire rules on those FNCs, which, which frustrated the industry. Oh, I'm sorry, that's not good enough. <laughs> Like, everything else is like to operate under any kind of disaster, like COVID included. But no, no, those F and Cs, like, with 85% with of their f***ing stock burn on the south coast are, are above these rules, apparently. Because according to those F and Cs, their own estimates say that 85% of the forest, the native forests down on the south coast, were decimated or burnt by the fires, and a further 44% were burnt on the north coast. So this means that they literally had their own supply reduced by that percentage. But, you know, in the way that corporate industry goes, they confidently told their supply contractors that they'd be able to supply them the same amount of wood, like as, as pre-bushfires. The Nature Conservation Council's estimates were that logging would have to increase sixfold on the south coast and up to twice the amount on the north coast to be able to fulfill these wood supply contracts. Which is cooked. Which is cooked. Which is cooked. 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 So basically, you've got old Dina on the radio saying that they quickly mitigated to make sure that the environment was being protected. And they're. I don't think so, mate, because you know what they did after this? Like. So not only did they, like, um, try to, like, move logging trucks into a proposed Great Koala Park, which is their fing, like, you know, token animal. Um, no, they fucking try to get access to national parks to log. I kid you not. On the 26th of January, which is a fitting fucking date, the Sydney Morning Herald published an article saying that fuckery corp, I mean, sorry, those F and Cs were trying to gain access to national parks for a quote unquote massive harvest and haulage operation. And they were also lobbying for more funding. Thanks, Barilaro. So yeah, like, can you believe the audacity of these people? Like, this is... This is what happens when you put an industry into the hands of the state. Within like, what, nine years, they were already knocking on the door, basically begging for access to national parks. So basically like after 15 months of negotiation, those FNCs walked away from um, talks they were having with the EPA basically about devising um, post bushfire rules. South Coast forests were burnt, people didn't want them logging down there. 
Forrester Corp, after this 15 month negotiation period with the EPA, basically said that they were going to resume logging down there on the basis of self regulation. As one of the campaigners down there at Broom and Forest, I think her name is Takeza, um, as she stated, she didn't think that you know self regulation would work. The EPA released briefing papers stating that they were um, concerned that those FNCs were being pushed by former Deputy Premier John Barillaro to deliver on commercial contracts which was namely black butt for the company Borrell. Now just a quick side note, Borrell is no longer the company, it's now owned by some fucking company called Pentark. Um, so they, those FNCs wrote to the Department of Regional New South Wales um, basically saying that they believe that forestry could log on the same environmental protections that were existence before the fires. So they were basically saying we don't need to change any rules, this is sweet, this will do, this will fucking do. Happy fucking days. Days, days, happy mitigated against any environmental impact. Happy fucking days. Days, days, happy mitigated against any environmental impact. My ass, mate, are you serious? On this note, like, it's been scientifically proven now that um, places, like Arim, because it has so much forest, actually difficult to burn. And science is backing this up, saying that um, clearing bush lands make areas more bushfire prone. You can see this in the, um, like, really kind of harrowing report that came out through some newspaper called The Beagle or something like that, but it was like a South Coast rag, and this guy is saying that they're actually extremely worried about the amount of debris that Forestry Corp, sorry, those FNCs, had um, left in the area, and they were scared it was going to spark a fire. Now, I'm pretty sure that this led to a fire being sparked in the area. Well, f***ing whoop de doo So anyway, it's like only a few weeks ago, my friend and I went up there as well, and we found these massive piles of logs just... just dumped in the bush like with no place to go like they were huge there were so many of them as well it was like ridiculous it could have been used for something but no like i guess those anyway so that's that's how they um believe that they should run the game so yeah basically it's all a big biff meanwhile there are hidden reports that come to light reports that are funded by taxpayers mate so somehow on this report those fncs come up with only four percent of the wood supply lost in the forest when the same review states that 49% of the forests were fire affected. Yeah, and, and then another f***ing report is withheld. And then even though the EPA, who initially stated that they would not hesitate to take strong regulatory action, are now ignoring the numerous amounts of reports of breaches that have come from the people down on the south coast. So it's all a big shit show. And the EPA's walked out, those FNCs don't give a f like, no one gives a f except for people like us and so that's why it's so important that we do this we stay in the state forest because they need us like the animals can't just talk and protest bro the deputy premier will not respond to any assumptions made or internal surmising by an elected officials at the epa she said it is a regulatory body not a policy maker the coastal ifoa was remade in 2018 and a decision made by the cabinet <laughs> Jesus Christ, bless New South Wales.